Alrighty, welcome back guys. Here we are in the grips of winter uh, and it is very cold outside, but nicely heated in the RC Spark studio. Why? Because I just got in the sound card uh, that I've been waiting for with Bumble Beast. Everybody's been writing me and saying, how dare you start another project? Because I'm building the CA-10 over on my other workbench. And, uh, you know, saying you haven't even finished Bumblebee yet. And so that's what I've been waiting on. It was just a slow boat to cross the ocean uh, to get the sound unit in from Cross RC. Now, I don't actually uh, have a speaker that actually fits in this box, which sounds kind of redundant. What am I here to do for you today? Well, regardless, even though I was able to to find a perfect speaker to fit in this, it is still in transit after all this time. This is the top of the electronics box for the Cross RC PG4L. Um, so that is going to act as a speaker box. I do have two other speakers right here, uh, which won't sound as good. These are just inexpensive ones, but I do want to hook up the sound module today. All right, here we go. This is the Cross RC sound unit for the pickup truck. Um, they have another one as well for older diesel trucks. We'll see if this is the right one. I've never heard the sound before, um, so I'm a little bit anxious. I wonder because it, it cost me quite a bit. I got it on eBay for about 70 bucks. I think that was an excellent price because I've seen it for way more. Um, but yeah, let's see, at least on the back, might as well take it out of the bag. It looks like it's pretty well labeled and it comes with the almighty instruction page. Thank you for including this. Not enough RC companies actually include instructions. Okay, so I'm assuming this is not waterproof. This is a truck engine sound system model uh, SK-2. Here you guys can see up there. There's the start channel and the throttle channel and the volume is right here. This actually feels pretty well made. This shrink wrap around here, like it feels, it doesn't feel inexpensive at least. It's got some weight to it. Uh, also, what's in the bag? We got cables, of course. A lot of people are intimidated by cables when they see a string of cables like this, but really just like hardware or screws and things how you've seen me separate them before. It's just like the old saying goes, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Now, I could bore you with this diagram. Some of you are gonna understand it immediately. Uh, but if you look closely at it, this is a power plug right here on the board, right at the bottom. And then you've got another plug for the speaker. So I'm gonna have to use that word again, intimidated. A lot of people will look at an electronics nest like this uh, and be very intimidated. And I don't want you guys to be, this is a little bit more advanced than a standard uh, RTR, but keep in mind, this is only a light kit. This is to handle all the lights, the headlights, the tail lights, the blinkers and all that. Um, this is going into my receiver. This is my ESC right here, which has uh, the battery plug on it and the two motor wires. And normally this wouldn't be here. These, this is for those uh, strip LEDs and this is a light controller for a remote control I have and showed in the last video. Um, so yeah, this whole thing, uh, if for me to say, if there's anything to say to you guys, is just try to keep your wires neat. A lot of people can use wire loom. I find that the, the leads can be so long on some of this that the loom isn't adequate enough unless it's a giant and, and then you still got all that mess in here. Most people have asked and suggested online that this box actually be extended another inch out this way, which would help uh, encompass everything, including, bum, 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 here it is. That is the switch uh, or the plugs that I was showing, the power and the speaker. This is gonna be a starting channel and the throttle channel. So I'm assuming this right here is gonna be for auxiliary. So I do have an auxiliary two open on my receiver. And uh, yeah, so guys, just try to keep it tidy. Don't let it intimidate you, easy to do. So this is the lighting board. They're telling me to go from channel uh, two straight in to the throttle channel on the sound unit. And then out, because there's two leads here, top and bottom, as you can see. And then out, it's coming over to the receiver. So that is exactly what I'm gonna do. But first what I wanna do is take some double-sided tape 
and mount these together. going to add a small zip tie just to keep it nice and secure because I know when I go outside in the cold sometimes double-sided tape doesn't want to have the, the adhesion it does when it's warmer but I don't want to crush anything so I'm kind of just molding uh, the plastic of the zip tie around but not over tightening. Okay, so my soldering iron is getting nice and warm. Uh, these two speakers I've basically put together. I'm going to solder them together. This looks like a crazy mess of wires right now. I know it does, but really it's not that bad. I've moved ahead and what I've done is I've made sure that the signal wire is proper on each. Because on the sound card there are dual inputs here, I can't tell which one is in and which one is out. And unfortunately, I cannot read that. So I'm gonna have to, you know, just trial and error here a little bit. Joining the two speaker wires together. Okay, I already put the uh, heat shrink on there. I've let it cool off because I don't want these joints to be too hot. Uh, when I put the heat shrink on or else it won't get in place before it cinches down. Now there are a lot of versions and theories out there but of course in my shop I just have a lighter. You can use a heat gun or a lighter but just simply problem solved. Okay I'm just going to attach the power leads to the ESC. I get the flux and the solder out of the way. So I'm still going to have to set up uh, my radio uh, for a switch so I can start this engine, I think. Um, got the whole truck up on jack stands right now just so I don't have any wheels touching the ground in case there is some sort of uh, electronic issue, which is very possible when you look at a, a nest of wires like this. Um, but regardless, I'm going to take my 3S LiPo. I did attach the wires up top to the ESC posts uh, for this direct voltage for 11.1 volts. And uh, let's see how it sounds. See if I can even get it started. This one goes into that one. Uh huh. Is it a two position switch? Oh, duh. I wasn't doing it right. Out of both, yep. And there is a volume. Oh, it just shut off. Anything? Hmm. All right, I know I'm about to lose half of the viewers right here, but for those that are here because they really need to figure out how to wire this up, this is the important part for you. Okay, so I did take the power wires of the sound card and put it on the power posts of my ESC. They could have gone directly to the LiPo battery wire if that's what I chose. Now, the ESC wire actually goes into the lighting kit in channel two. I believe it is on the bottom port. You can see my thumb is kind of touching it there, the bottom port. And then one of the leads you get with the sound card comes off of the second port and goes into the lower port of the sound card. Then on the top of that port, that one goes off into the throttle, of, uh, throttle input of the receiver. So that is it, and all it is is this extra cord uh, is an on and off for your auxiliary. Guys, thank you for bearing with me on that. That will help the people that are, are needing uh, the help. So I'm gonna go ahead and tidy this up because I know it looks like an absolute nightmare. And in three, two, one, that's about as clean as it gets, my friends. <laughs> Look at that, I'm even hiding some because over here there's a bundle of wires that'll basically go on top. But I've mounted the speakers one in front of the other. So there's one right there. This is actually just a cable. So it's, it's held on with double-sided tape on either side. Not a lot of tolerance there, but everything is clear. Even though it may look like it's not, it is. And even when I rattle this around and bounce it around, this battery tray does not move. So these two speakers are only temporary. I know they sound terrible. In fact, I'm not even sure uh, that we will like this, but I want to see how it goes here. So I set it up uh, on my D switch. There is a horn and a start. So here we go. That's the horn. I think the horn could use improvement for sure. 
Okay, this to me sounds like a Land Rover. Right, or a Toyota. Oh, it died there. <laughs> and it's not easy to use. I definitely have noticed there's some glitches in the one I have. So, horn. Oh, and then it stalled out. So this is the problem I've had with the Cross RC sound unit so far, is that even though I have it wired up properly, I've made sure all of my trims in the radio are fine. The sub trim is fine. Everything is, is at zero right now, um, but there is a certain way to do it. It's almost like it would work better if it was on a uh, dual stick radio instead of a pistol grip, but we'll see how it goes here. Okay, gotta do the horn one more time. Yeah, I've got it now, okay. So here, we're gonna place this on top. It's still up on uh, jack stands right now. Here, place you over here just while I get it ready. There's the blue halos you guys can see. Everything is fitting there. And it still has two screws that are supposed to go in the side to help these running boards get cinched up against the body. I don't like that sound. It needs to be throatier. I don't know. I don't know. Look at this. This is bothering me. My OCD and me. The bead did not sit evenly and looks like it's wobbling. You see how it's uneven? I'm pointing out all the negatives, but I gotta tell you, this thing is pretty awesome overall. Gotta fix that bead. Let's go to the other side. Isn't it more inspiring over here? Yes. Now, I do have another sound kit. Oh, this is the new uh, S1 sound kit from Sense Innovations. This has dual speakers in it. I wonder if it has any better sounds. Oh, here I got a wire hanging out for my uh, LEDs. I can't believe I went to check my, uh, here, let me shut this off. I can't believe I went to check uh, and turn on my LEDs for you on the inside cab, but unfortunately the battery to the remote is dead. I left it for such a long time I couldn't, uh, I didn't have enough battery power to turn on the inside light for you, but regardless, at least we got the sound kit installed. Now anybody wondering what the pickup truck sound kit sounds like? It's, this would sound amazing in a Land Rover. Oh, because <laughs> I didn't do the horn first. Horn. And then gently on the trigger. Okay, okay, that was growing on me a little bit. If I had a better speaker and it was way more throatier, it could sound good, but for a V10, I may have to move over to the Sense Innovations one, only because it is like, currently from what I found the best, but I'll keep my mind open, look for other things. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. I'm supposed to tell you to like, click, comment, subscribe. So there, I just did it, uh, of course, but I figured if you wanted to come back and see more, you'd do it on your own anyway. Guys, get outside, enjoy the hobby of RC. We'll see you in the next episode of RC Adventures. Bye for now. Loving those halo lights.